All over the world, wherever our troops have landed, supplies must go through, even though harbors and piers are inadequate or non-existent. Some of the cargoes are carried by lighter and trucks, but transferring cargoes on the beaches eats up precious time, causes congestion and invites attacks from the air. Here's a solution to this vital problem of supply. In one simple operation, a newly perfected amphibian picks up a cargo from a ship anchored offshore. Able to roll over sandbars or reefs that would ground a lighter, it heads for the shore, takes its cargo out of the surf and across exposed beaches, and deposits it at a dump well inland. Pack horse of land and sea, it's known officially as the DUKW. The man who drives one calls it the Duck. With the amphibious hull stripped away, the duck stands revealed as the standard six by six, two and a half ton army truck. Parts, of course, are interchangeable, which is a big advantage. With five forward gears, high and low range, it can do 50 miles an hour on good roads and six and a half in the water. In training schools along the American seaboard, Men are learning how to operate and service ducks. Training is tough, but interesting. A driver must be a combination truckman, stevedore, seaman, and mechanic. After warming the engine to 140 degrees, the beginners practice land driving under the guidance of an instructor. There are many hands now, but there'll be only two men to a crew when training is completed. The hard, wide stretches along the water give them a chance to get accustomed to the duck's unusual turning diameter. Then they're ready to practice convoy driving, learning to maintain the proper interval, which is twice the speedometer reading in yards. Tire pressure must be changed to fit changes in driving conditions as shown in the table in the driver's cab. This is vitally important. In fact, with wrong pressure in the tires, the duck may be unable to accomplish its mission. All types of roads and cross-country driving are encountered. And because of its ship-to-shore operations, the amphibian must often travel through loose sand. For this sort of driving, the duck uses its low transfer and six-wheel drive. With the wrong tire pressure, sand is a trap, as this demonstration will clearly show. The duck on the left has tire pressure for road driving, the one on the right for sand. The hard tires make narrow, deep tracks, while the deflated tires play out like a camel's foot giving good traction. The driver with the hard tires might have gotten through on level ground, but now he's in a spot with his wheels digging in deep. The other duck keeps right on rolling. This can happen even with deflated tires, and the duck is provided with a winch, cable, and anchor, which are invaluable in such emergencies. With the anchor securely buried in the earth, the duck can pull itself out. A T-shaped hole is dug with the head of the T four feet deep to give the flukes of the anchor a good grip. Then they unlock the winch in the stern of the duck, get out the block and tow chain, and lead the winch chain through the guide ports to the bow. Equipped with 300 feet of wire cable, the duck is prepared to pull itself out or pull out another duck. It's a good idea to unreel a lot of cable as this increases the strength of the pull.
after the tow chain is shackled to the anchor, the anchor is buried. The winch cable is led through the block, which is hooked to the chain. The block doubles the pulling power. If a duck must back up to reach firm ground, it pulls itself out from the stern using the pencil hook and towing link. When winching from the bow, the cable should be secured to a lower towing shackle with the point of the hook up. Then the winch is engaged in low, and the slow, steady pull begins with the wheels helping out. The cable should be wound up evenly and tightly. Next time, this crew will watch their tire pressure more carefully. When the duck goes from loose sand to a hard road, the air pressure in the tires must be increased to get maximum speed and prevent injury to the tires. The crew engages the tire pump, using the control in the driver's cab, and gets out the air hose. Six tires should register 40 pounds. Inflating and deflating as driving conditions change may take a little time, but it prevents injury to tires and keeps the driver from getting stuck. And in a combat area, that's essential. Many precautions must be taken before the duck enters the water. Tire pressure must be set for the next landing. Bilge plugs and hatches must be checked. The crew erect front and rear surfboards. They also don life jackets. When the waves are more than six feet high, the windshield guard is erected. The propeller is engaged and the duck heads into the surf, keeping as square as possible to the breakers. Until clear of the shallows and outlying sandbars, the amphibian is still part vehicle, so the wheels are kept engaged. Drivers learn that steering is quite different than it is on land. The stern instead of the bow responds to the wheel, and much more slowly. They ship water but the bilge pumps running constantly with a capacity of 220 gallons a minute take care of that. When the engine stalls and no other vessel is available for towing or when visibility is poor, the duck has to anchor. In ordinary weather, it's anchored from the stern. In heavy seas, the cable is led through the fair lead at the bow and back to the stern. When the anchor is dropped overboard, wind and waves will shift the duck so that it is anchored from the bow. The anchor is hauled up by the winch until it is possible to make a line fast to the anchor shackle. Then the line is led back amidships and the anchor is hauled aboard. Though ducks operate individually, during training they keep together. The 
men learn to engage the wheels as they come into the shallows and to disengage the propeller as they land. To be a good driver, the landsman must learn something about navigation. For instance, how to read a chart and spot a course. This is important in unfamiliar waters or when visibility is bad. With the course laid out, the instruction group starts off. They observe the usual precautions, such as donning life preservers. They head squarely into the surf, with the wheels ready to roll them over shallow spots. The assistant keeps the driver on the course with the aid of the chart and the compass. Now they're heading in for a landing across an inlet where a strong tide is flowing. Tides and currents will always fool a novice, and this man is making the usual beginner's mistake of pointing his bow at the front marker on the shore where he intends to land. Watch the front and rear markers spread out showing how the current is pulling him off course. Sure, he'll land where he's heading, but he's doing it the hard way, going in there in an arc instead of a straight line. go straight to the landing point, the front marker, the experienced driver doesn't aim at it, but up current. By keeping one marker directly behind the other, he'll know he's heading just far enough up current, and he'll go in toward the front marker as straight as an arrow. In the water, as well as on land, there are traffic rules which must be followed. For instance, a duck coming out of the surf has the right of way. If a driver finds another approaching him from the starboard or right, he stays out of his way. Generally, when two approach each other head on, they both bear to starboard. The men are thoroughly grounded in maintenance work, which is highly important in a truck that goes to sea. Every vital part should be serviced at regular intervals. They become familiar with the easily accessible engines with their waterproof hatches and waterproof spark plug housing. Daily maintenance work includes filling the grease cups, greasing with the gun, and oiling. Once a week, a duck goes up on the grease rack for a thorough job from bow to stern. But every day, lubrication is checked and rechecked. Taking on cargo from an offshore freighter requires a special system of mooring and various precautions. The men are taught to be on the alert as the crushing weight comes down to them, especially in a heavy sea. They guide it to a resting place forward in the compartment so that the amphibian will ride well. To simplify the operation, both at the loading and unloading ends, the cargo sling goes right along with the load. Under normal sea conditions, the duck can carry as much as 6,000 pounds with efficiency. on inland to the dump, which is under good cover. One way of unloading is by means of another duck operating as a crane with its winch, cable, block, and a special A-frame. Several ducks in each company are equipped with A-frames. Special hand signals are used by the dump crew and the A-frame operator. 
As a precautionary measure, the A-frame lowers its heavy burden close to the ground. Then it carries the load to any selected spot. The A-frame can carry as much as 4,500 pounds. The men learn to handle smaller objects in a cargo net or on a wooden pallet. In this case, 75-pound boxes of ammunition are being taken to a dump, as they would be in supplying a beachhead. In both land and sea driving, a duck crew must know a lot of tricks. Here, for instance, a strong current is holding the amphibian against the ship. To get away, the driver swings out his stern by using the wheel. Then he reverses the engine, engages the wheels in high transfer, and when he has sufficient clearance, disengages the wheels and swings out. A speedy, efficient method of unloading small cases is by special chutes, known as hog troughs. As each duck enters the dumping area, it is boarded by a hog trough crew. As the duck crawls along, the cases are laid down as much as 6,000 pounds in two minutes the duck circling back toward the entry point. Each succeeding duck lays down its cases in a wider circle. On the return journey to the ship, a duck may carry casualties. As many as 12 men may be carried in the cargo compartment if they're loaded according to plan. The first two litters must be laid on the floor crosswise in the front. The next four go in lengthwise at the back. This leaves just enough room between front and rear litters for two medical attendants to stand within easy reach of most of the men. There is room for six more across the top. Tarpaulin protects the wounded from the weather and from salt spray, an important matter in the case of those suffering from shock. The great advantage in transporting the wounded by duck is that handling is reduced to the absolute minimum. As the amphibian rolls down to the beach, into the water, out to the ship, they stay right where they were loaded. Even at shipside, they're not moved, for a special wire sling lifts the duck to the deck, where the men will be unloaded and carried to the sick bay. Land and sea ambulance service, and not the least important of the many jobs which the members of the duck company must learn to perform smoothly and efficiently. Intensive training turns the men into well-drilled crews, each unit of the company ready for service overseas. The squad with its four ducks, the section with its eight, the platoon with 16, and the entire company with 50, as well as a truck, a wrecker, a jeep, and an aqua jeep. On their way to Guadalcanal, and men and amphibians are ready to meet the challenge of primitive conditions. No great port facilities in the savage jungle lands of the far Pacific, few harbors or piers of any sort. 
and barrier reefs of coral blocking off 85% of the tropical shores from boat landing. But the ducks can ride over barrier reefs, which suggests how large a part they will play in future operations in this part of the world and elsewhere. Independent of piers and harbor facilities, the ducks quickly pick up their cargo and carry it ashore, riding low in the water and well spaced out, offering a poor target to any Jap flyer. The sea is calm here and landings are easy, but the ducks can also land on difficult beaches, coming in safely through crashing 15-foot breakers. Inland bound along a road through a grove of coconut palms, which gives no hint of the usual tough operating conditions in the Solomons. Straight to the dump, well screened from aerial observation. In supplying a beachhead, time is vital, and the ducks load and unload with no lost motion, shuttling back and forth, helping the freighters to turn about quickly for more cargo. Soon the ducks will be equipped with a revolutionary device whereby the air pressure in the tires may be changed to fit driving conditions while the duck is in motion. Other improvements are on the way for the Army's seagoing truck to increase its usefulness on fronts all over the world. Supplies must go through, and the duck is breaking the bottleneck. <laughs>